The Mayans were very good astronomers. They knew how the planets moved, they knew about the seasons, and they made very good calendars. Like us, they had cycles in their calendars. We have months, years, centuries. They had different cycles, but they still had cycles. And one of their cycles lasted over 5,000 years. And that cycle is coming to an end this year in December. Now the Mayans, as far as I can understand, reckoned that that was the end of a cycle and that there would be a new cycle following it, a rebirth. They did not reckon it was the end of everything. There are quite a few theories about how the world might end. Uh, for so example, it's been suggested that there could be a big solar storm which would take the world out. Well, we get solar storms from time to time um, and they're a bit troublesome if you're an astronaut. Indeed, not good news if you're an astronaut. But down here on Earth, we are protected by the Earth's magnetosphere, the effects of the magnetic field. And OK, solar storms can disturb that. They can produce currents in power lines that sometimes cause trouble. Um, they can take out satellites, stop satellites working. So they could affect our GPS and any telephone calls that go by satellite, for example. But they're not going to end the world. Every so often, asteroids do hit the Earth. We know we can see some of the craters. There's Meteor Crater, or Barringer Crater, as it's properly called, in Arizona. And there's traces of a very big crater, partly on the Mexican Yucatan Peninsula and partly under the sea. That big crater was the result of an impact about 65 million years ago. And it's thought that's what caused the extinction of the dinosaurs and many other things. So a big thing like that could cause us some problems. Broadly speaking, what happens is when something big like that impacts, it not only makes a crater, it kicks up a whole lot of dust into the atmosphere. And the atmosphere cuts out the sunlight and that stops crops growing and foods fail and there's starvation and so on. So that is something we need to look out for. And we are looking out for. There's an array of telescopes all around the world monitoring the sky night after night, uh, actually monitoring about a thousand potentially hazardous objects, things that might come and hit the Earth one day. As they monitor them, they discover that the vast majority of them won't, that as they get the orbit more accurately, they see it'll miss the Earth. But if there was something coming to hit the Earth, we'd get two or three years' notice. And even with today's technology, we could divert it so that it didn't impact the Earth. And there's research going on all the time which will improve that technology so that it gets easier to divert an incoming asteroid. We've got no knowledge of any big asteroid coming to hit us. Some of the techniques they use to deflect an asteroid, um, one of them is to paint it white all over, which means it reflects sunlight very well. And the sunlight bouncing off the asteroid will push it sideways so that it'll move away and not hit the Earth. That's one of the neatest solutions. But they're also developing what they call gravity tractors, satellites that are pretty heavy and through their own gravity can attract the asteroid and make it change course. And there's also some that will actually physically hook onto the asteroid and tug it aside. So there's lots of ways of doing this. The magnetic field of the Earth, the thing that makes your compass point due north, that f flips over every so often. And I'm using flip as a geologist would use flip. The flip actually takes 5,000 years. We think what happens when a flip is coming up, you know, in a few thousand years, is that the Earth's magnetic field starts to shrink. It doesn't disappear completely, but it shrinks. It then turns over, north becomes south and south becomes north, and grows again. And at the moment, it is true, the Earth's magnetic field is shrinking. But we've only been measuring the Earth's magnetic field for about 200 years and we don't really have a very good database. It may meander around a bit anyway. 
or it might be the beginning of a flip. But remembering it takes 5,000 years, it's not going to be accomplished before the end of 2012. In the last two or three million years since tool-using people started appearing on Earth, there have been about a dozen of these flips of the Earth's magnetic field and it doesn't seem to have done anybody any harm. I do a lot of outreach lectures and starting several years ago, particularly in the USA, um, particularly lecturing to schools, regardless of what I was lecturing about, at the end some kid would put up their hand and say, is the world going to end in 2012? And after two or three questions like this I thought I'd better look into it. And that's where this whole exercise started for me. Hi everybody. Now what have we got here? A pyramid in the middle of nowhere built to track the end of the world? My goodness, what have we got there? And what are all those other buildings? A huge pyramid in the middle of nowhere tracking the end of the world on radar. An abstract geometric shape beneath the sky without a human being in sight. It could be the opening scene of an apocalyptic science fiction film, but it's just the U.S. military going about its business, building vast and otherworldly architectural structures that the civilian world only rarely sees. The Library of Congress has an extraordinary set of images documenting the Stanley R. Mickelson Safeguard Complex in Cavalier County, North Dakota, showing it in various stages of construction and completion. And the photos are awesome. It's huge. Taken for the U.S. Gover government by photographer Benjamin Halpern, the particular images seen here show the central pyramid, pyramid, obelisk, monument, megastructure, whatever you want to call it, that served as the site's mis missile control building. Like the Eye of Saron crossed with Giza, it looks in all directions. It's all-seeing, white circles staring endlessly at invisible airborne objects across the horizon. The pyramid's location is given somewhat absurdly as northeast of Tactical Road, southeast of Tactical Road South. Like I said, it's in the middle of nowhere. One thing I like so much about these shots is how they remind me of the hulking Mayan runes found at I'm not even going to try to pronounce that. Chichen Itza. Check out these comparative shots, for example, where the latter image was taken by photographer Henry Sweet during a 19th century archaeological journey led by Alfred P. Mosley. The photo was featured as part of an exhibition at the University of North Carolina back in 2007. Oh, wait till you see the next image. Wait till you see this next image. Oh my goodness. It looks exactly like that, doesn't it? It sure does. Except for the top. There is nothing really to compare outside of their same overall geometry, of course, yet it's striking to consider the functional, if obvious, metaphoric similarities here as well. One structure was built as part of a kind of divine tracking system for celestial events and epic calendars as dark constellations of gods spun across the sky. The other was a temple to mathematics built for pinging incoming missiles as they streaked horizon to horizon, a site of early warning against the apocalypse as nuclear warheads would burst open to shine their artificial world blinding light on the obliterated landscapes below. Trajectories, paths, horizons, both pyramids in a sense were architectural monuments for navigation of different kinds, both timeless, strange and seemingly inhuman. 
spatial artifacts of a lost civilization. In any case, the original photos on the LOC website are heavily specked with dust and some lens artifacts, but I've cleaned up my favorites and posted some of them here. But this is how modern day pyramids, just a sec here, what's going on? Oh, I hate that when that happens. Why is it doing that? Oh my goodness. Sheesh. This is how modern day pyramids are made. Huge budgets and ziggurats of rebar. As tiny figures wearing hard hats scramble around amidst these Herculean forms, checking diagrams against reality and trying not to think of the nuclear war this structure was built to track. Wow. Just incredible. It's kind of sick too, isn't it? It's actually very sick. To track nuclear war? Wow. Just look at that. I don't know. Seems really eerie to me. I don't know. Very eerie. Those are diagrams. So, there you have it. In the middle of nowhere. Well, thank you so much for watching this video. And I will post a link below. Oh, there's another one there. Looks like similar RAF filing Dale's early warning radar in Yorkshire in England. Some of the comments there. Yeah, all kinds of weird structures. Hmm. Anyhow, thank you for watching, and as I said, I'll post a link below.